It's a scary world to be raising my daughter in. For Alyssa Meredith, especially in being in my hometown, the crime scene just down the street from her house is like nothing she's ever seen before. There's never been this much activity in Excelsior. <laughs> for hours, neighbors sat and watched as detectives took bags of evidence out of the house on the corner of Old Orchard Avenue. This is going to be a multi-day process. Police say a woman ran from the home, screaming for help on Friday morning. It was readily apparent that she had been held against her will for a significant period of time. She told police she was kidnapped and sexually assaulted. She also says there are more victims. We asked, police won't comment on that. This is an ongoing, we continue to find more and more stuff. A cadaver dog also searched the property. Video from News Chopper 9 shows detectives combing through evidence on the side of the house. Still, no specifics on what they found. We just want to make sure that we leave no stone unturned. Before I begin my commentary, I want to do a small disclaimer. The following content may be triggering to some viewers, that for viewer discretion is advised. On October 7th, a terrified 22-year-old black woman escaped from a home in Excelsior Springs. She told police she had been locked up there for about a month after being abducted from Prospect Avenue in Kansas City by a man who lives in the home. The man, Timothy M. Hazlitt Jr., 39, is in custody facing charges of rape, kidnapping, and assault in Clay County. The woman told neighbors and police that she was restrained in a small room in Hazlitt's basement where he repeatedly raped, beat, and tortured her. She managed to escape when he took his elementary age school son to school. The woman told a neighbor and police something else. There were other victims, she said, women who didn't make it out. The woman's escape and Hazlitt's arrest occurred a month after the Kansas City Defender, a black owned news publication, republished a video of Bishop Tony Caldwell, a community and church leader, alerting the public of assertions that at least several black girls and women are missing from the Prospect Area Corridor. We've got four young ladies that have been murdered within the last week off of here at 85th and Prospect, Caldwell said in the video. We've got a serial killer again. Timothy Hazlitt Jr. is facing rape, kidnapping, and assault charges in Clay County, accused of locking up a woman for weeks. Newly released court documents say the victim, a 22-year-old woman, escaped while Hazlitt brought his child to school Friday. She ran for help, wearing only a trash bag with a metal collar and duct tape around her neck. Those documents say she was handcuffed, whipped, beaten, and raped while locked in a small room in his basement for weeks. Hazlitt had his first day in court today in Liberty. Our cameras weren't allowed inside, but a judge entered a not guilty plea on his behalf, adding that Hazlitt would get a public defender. And tonight we have exclusive video of that arrest. KMBC Nice Jackson Kurtz is live in Excelsior Springs. And Jackson, you talked to the man who made the 911 call leading to that arrest. We did, and he filmed that video just inside his home, just a couple doors down from when that arrest happened. You can still see outside the home. They still have that police line tape up and cage outside of the entire home. Just one look, and... It gives me the chills. I just can't imagine what went inside of that house. Everardo Miranda, who lives a couple doors down from Timothy Halslet, filmed the moments Hazlitt was taken into custody. I could have never imagined that happened here in Excelsior Springs. In the exclusive video to Channel 9, after calling police because of complaints about the dog. Oh man, you know, I felt bad because they took him to jail for the dog, you know, and uh, I go to sleep and I wake up to find out this crazy thing happened just right next door to us. You know? Miranda says he rarely saw Hazlitt, only to let the dog in and outside and never saw the woman who ran for help. What that woman went through, you know, my heart breaks for her. Hopefully he rots in jail. He should not see sunlight ever again. Hopefully things get better around here. And I'm trusting the police officers around here to, you know, keep us secure. Still lots of neighbors and folks just driving by, still with lots of questions of what happened inside this home. 
Live in Excelsior Springs, Jackson Kurtz, KNBC 9 News. Jackson, thanks. Hazlitt is due back in court one week from today for a bond hearing. I am so disappointed in the media and in law enforcement. And I know I will probably ruffle a few feathers and step on a few toes, but I don't care. I have something to say and I'm gonna say it and whoever don't like it, I really don't care. Here's the thing. I wanna know why is it that some stories get all the attention? I mean, back to back news coverage. You have content creators covering the stories. You can go on any platform and find people covering the stories, but yet some stories you don't hear anything about. I mean, you really have to go searching to find out any information concerning it. I wonder, I don't see anybody covering the story. I had a subscriber reach out to me and she asked me to cover the story. And initially I was like, wow, I never heard of that. You know, like, because I didn't. And I'm on YouTube a lot. I'm on different platforms trying to find out, you know, different things that's going on. Different things that I can bring to the table and discuss. So I'm sure I would have seen this, right? Well, I didn't. So once she gave me the information, I went and I did a little digging and I didn't see anything. The few things that I was able to pull up basically said the allegations were unfounded. So I reached back out to her and I said, well, I don't know. I said, I'm not finding anything on it. I said, the few little things that I did discover said that the allegations were unfounded. I said, but let me dig a little deeper and I'll see what I can find. So after digging for a while, I ran into some things. And when I tell you the stuff that I came into made me sick to my damn stomach. Residents in Missouri are criticizing police for what they call inaction to reports of missing black women in the area. Now, this is all surrounding a case from a few weeks ago. A 22-year-old black woman escaped from a man in Excelsior Springs who she says raped her and kept her hostage in his basement for a month. That man, Timothy Haslett Jr., is facing multiple charges, including kidnapping and assault. Now, an article by the Kansas City Defender is claiming that residents in Missouri had been raising the alarm about black women going missing in the area weeks before the woman was found. At the time, the Defender reported that the Kansas City Police Department called the rumors, quote, completely unfounded. Ryan Zoyal joins us now. He is the founder and editor in chief of the Kansas City Defender, an online publication devoted to reporting on the black community. Ryan, thanks so much for joining us. Can you give us more details about what residents had been telling police about missing women prior to October 7th when the victim was found? Uh, absolutely. Uh, first off, thank you all so much for bringing me on here to talk about this incredibly tragic uh, situation. It's, it's truly horrifying, quite honestly. And uh, the people that actually initially made these reports and these testimonies of missing black women were here where I'm located in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, just for clarification, it was the people here in our community in Kansas City that were making these initial reports that black women uh, were both missing and potentially being killed specifically on a street called Prospect here in Kansas City. And we also reported on that. On We talked to numerous people in our community who said that missing black women were you know, being snatched off of this street called Prospect in Kansas City, Missouri. And despite the fact that we reported it, despite the fact that numerous community members uh, were also raising the alarm about this issue, the Kansas City Police Department, without contacting us to see where we got this information from, without reaching out to anyone in the community whatsoever, without reaching out to any community leaders, our Kansas City Police Department responded three days later and said that the reports that we made were completely unfounded without doing any type of investigation whatsoever. And of course, as you all mentioned, about a month later after the police department said that those reports were completely unfounded, this woman from Excelsior Springs who escaped from this man's basement said that she had actually been picked up and snatched off of Prospect Avenue here in Kansas City at the exact same time period that we said 
uh, in our reporting and that people in our community were reporting that black women were being snatched from this street called Prospect. And so the most troubling aspect of this entire situation is, number one, uh, that our community is not being listened to, specifically black women. Uh, that is what we find to be the most uh, disturbing aspect of this situation is that we made these reports. We, you know, raised the alarm multiple times and our police department quite literally silenced the alarms that people in our community were making. Ryan, I want to follow up with you on that. Uh, and, and for viewers who may be not as well versed, there are two police departments that we're talking about here. Kansas City, Excelsior City. Excelsior City is where that that woman was found um, having been uh, held hostage and other terrible, terrible things. Um, the Excelsior City Police Department responded to claims that they ignored reports from the community about these missing black women. In a statement, they say we have checked with law enforcement agencies in the Kansas City metropolitan area and there are no current missing persons reports, which correspond with the evidence examined so far in this investigation. Uh, Ryan, I also read your most recent report uh, where you, you took on Kansas City's police department for what they had said before, those completely unfounded rumors. Uh, and it still says that uh, we do maintain that there's no indication that what you guys reported was accurate, even after this woman was found. And we should also tell our, vote, our viewers that, that, there's, that there is the possibility that there were other victims uh, that are still being investigated. How do you account for both what you've heard from these police departments, those statements, and also do you feel like even after this has come to light that your, these reports are still not being taken seriously? Absolutely. I think that both of those are excellent questions. And quite frankly, to us in the community, with the police department maintaining their position, that what they initially said, that these reports in the community were completely unfounded, even after this woman who escaped this situation said herself, she's the victim. And she said herself, she got picked up off of Kansas City, uh, this, pro this street called Prospect in Kansas City. And so for the police department to continue and say that the reports of missing people from this particular street were completely unfounded is honestly a slap in the face to the people in our community. It uh, once again just drives their credibility down, quite frankly. And it, it's, it's once again just very troubling. And uh, I think that the, the primary problem here that we see is that in that statement that you just mentioned from the Excelsior Springs Police Department, where they say they don't have any missing persons reports that correlate the two, uh, what we can look at is that the woman who actually escaped did not have a missing persons report on her. And so uh, she was still from Kansas City. She still got picked up off prospect where people said she was missing but she did not have a missing persons report. And so there could be numerous other women who are missing and the police department should be willing to look into their cases and investigate, even if a formal missing persons report is not filed. Do you think they owe you an apology? I mean, not me. I think they owe the black community at large and especially uh, the black women. I mean, this woman was tortured in her basement for in this man's basement for over a month. Uh, multiple women potentially have also been killed I, I think they should be apologizing to the families. I think they should be apologizing to the black community at large. Uh, and I really don't know how they regain trust and credibility in our community. And so what we are doing on the ground is we're, we're establishing our own infrastructure, our own public safety infrastructure and missing persons databases so that we don't have to rely on the police department to do that for us. All right, Ryan Sorrell, thank you. Thank you. Back in mid-September, a father was in search of his 15-year-old daughter, who was last seen around the Prospect Corridor. Upon looking for his daughter, who was recovered and she was alive, it was discovered that many other women and teens were missing. This information was brought to the Kansas City Police Department, and they basically took the information and did nothing with it. They didn't go out and ask questions or anything. They simply took the information and discarded it as if it was nothing. The man who's been arrested in this particular case, and not clear how many women are his victims, women and girls, um, 
But this whole issue of uh, him being a white supremacist, um, posting uh, you posting that Haslett was a white supremacist who believed we're in a race war. Um, uh, he posted the race war started a long time ago. Uh, wake up, you dumb bee. In another post, uh, saying he believed Breonna Taylor should deserve to die. Um, talk about this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that that's all part of it. You know, this this is a, a case of, you know, racial terrorism, uh, of, you know, sex crimes against black women specifically. And so I think that the fact that he is a white supremacist is not surprising in the least. Uh, we do know, as you mentioned, that he said we're in a race war. He said uh, that black people are lesser human beings. He said uh, when you start acting like humans, then uh, he'll start treating us like humans. And so I, I think that, you know, it's very unsurprising to us that uh, this man, Timothy Hazlitt Jr., is a white supremacist. And so I, I think, once again, just to go back to what Justice said, uh, this conversation, uh, I think, is much larger than uh, this specific situation, this this absolutely horrific situation. And I think that uh, it's very unfortunate, and this is what I have been telling a lot of people, that it's truly unfortunate that it required uh, this such a horrific tragedy to take place in order and, and for us to have to expose uh, how the police department operates, how the police operate. And I do want to reiterate as well that uh, even now, after it was clear that the white media outlets uh, helped silence the black community in this case, they're still, uh, even as recently as yes, last yesterday evening uh, and, and today, the white news outlets in our city continue to uh, print exactly and parrot exactly what the police are saying. And so really, it looks like already they have not learned anything at all from this situation. Uh, they continue to believe the police over the community and to con continue to silence the community. Um, and so I think, once again, that's standard journalistic practices in many cases for a lot of these local news outlets, for a lot of these white owned news outlets. And so uh, we want to uh, continue to uplift the conversation around uh, what the work that women like justice are doing uh, for for black women and, and to, continue to continue to uplift the conversation around how media outlets are complicit uh, in how these crimes and the and these horrific uh, acts of violence were allowed to continue to take place even after they were reported. We want to continue those conversations as well. Your black-led independent newspaper has been leading the charge on this, as the police department adamantly denied there was any issue until this woman escaped with chains. Can you take us through this story and not only her story, but she said to the woman who helped her that her friends were killed? Absolutely. I mean, I think that this is one of the most horrific uh, tragedies that I have ever come across in my lifetime. I know that when we first reported this story, we received it from numerous community members who were making these reports and testimonies is what we refer to them as. The police department refers to them as rumors, largely because they come from the black community. But we reported these reports and testimonies in mid to late September. And you know, rather than reaching out to us to understand and get, gather more information about where we got this information from, rather than reaching out to the community to understand where these concerns were coming from, the police department, three days after we reported this initially, uh, you know, came out and literally just said, these are completely unfounded rumors, is what they called them. And as you mentioned, they said that there are no, there's no basis to support these claims. And so uh, to me and to us and our community, the number one problem with how the police department handled this situation was that they called it completely unfounded without doing any type of investigation at all. And it seemed you know, much more like they were actually trying to discredit our community voices and to silence our community voices than to uh, you know, look after what was actually happening in our community. And to us, that's a testament to the type of anti-blackness that is prevalent in our police department, which is also currently under federal investigation for racism and discrimination. And so once these new revelations came out, I actually reached out to the police department to see if they would update their statement or if they still maintained their initial position that our reports were completely unfounded. And they said that they do still 
maintain, you know, regardless of these new revelations that clearly show that they were wrong, they said they still maintain their position that what we reported, they said specifically, was completely unfounded. Uh, and so we think that this is a larger conversation even beyond this specific situation. We think that this speaks to the silencing, uh, the violent silencing of black women specifically, of the black community at large here in Kansas City. And this is actually something that has been happening since the inception of the Kansas City Police Department. And uh, we, we know that this is not the first time that this has ever happened. Uh, and, and Ryan, I wondered if you could elaborate on that, some of the department's legacy of inflicting violence on the black community and also, uh, and, and at times, even police officers themselves implicated. Absolutely. I mean, our police department, as I mentioned, is under uh, federal investigation at this very moment. Uh, the federal investigation was launched a little bit over a month ago. Uh, even just this past year, there have been multiple cases where the police department has been indicted for corruption. Uh, for for instance, uh, a situation last year where the very first police uh, police officer in Kansas City Police Department history was finally indicted for the murder of an unarmed black man. And in that case, this was the case of Cameron Lamb. In that case, it was proven in the courtroom that the Kansas City Police Department planted evidence. They planted a gun. Uh, and said that it was from Cameron Lamb. In another instance, a man named Malcolm Johnson was murdered in a gas station, and the police department in the official police reports said that Malcolm Johnson was was armed and that he was engaged in a shootout with the police department. And it wasn't until weeks later when employees of that gas station leaked surveillance footage that showed that not only was Malcolm Johnson unarmed the entire time, but that he was actually being held down by three police officers. And one of the police officers accidentally shot another police officer and then murdered Malcolm. And so this uh, pattern uh, of what's taking place in our city with the police department lets us know that we have no expecta expectation any longer that they have the capability to be able to provide safety for people in our communities. And so that's why people like, uh, you'll hear from Justice Gatson from the Real Justice Network, these these black women who are creating infrastructure and public safety infrastructure for, that we can create for ourselves in our community so that we don't have to rely on this police department that we know is very clearly and blatantly anti-black uh, blatantly racist and, and is currently being inv investigated for these things. So, yeah, you mentioned Justin Gaston, uh, uh, Justice Gatson. I'd like to bring you into the conversation. Uh, welcome to Democracy Now. And could you talk about the uh, the this uh, the Excelsior Springs neighborhood where Timothy Haslett lived uh, and Prospect Avenue, the area where uh, the 22-year-old black woman who escaped his house was from. Yeah, sure. So Excelsior Springs is like a suburb of Kansas City. Um, so down on Prospect area, the 80s, that would be considered in the city of Kansas City. And so you'll have to drive out of the city into Excelsior Springs. Uh, and, and so it's a smaller community in Excelsior Springs, a quieter community. And quite frankly, I could see um, a, an easier space to get away with something like this. Um, and, and so, yeah, um, that that's the that's the community. That's the landscape. As much as I hate to bring it up, I admit it. I have to say it. But racism still exists more now than ever. And this is a clear indication of that fact. Now, I have publicly expressed how I feel and I have no issues with nobody. I see everyone as equal and I love everyone who love me. But I have to say it, if the missing were of a different race, how would this have played out? I can guarantee it would have went completely different from this. And I can also guarantee that this story will not get a lot of views because they will not click on it. People will see the title and they will not click on it because it doesn't matter. But we, those who care, those who unite, we have to make a difference and we have to push this out there because it's not right. It doesn't matter what color they were. Wrong is wrong. And we have to stop this. We have to come together and stand together as one and stop stuff like this from happening. We can do it.
I am a little upset right now. The reason I'm upset is because we got four young ladies that have been murdered within the last week uh, here off of 85th and Prospect. We got a serial killer again. And ain't nobody saying nothing. The media is not covering it. We got three young ladies that are missing. Ain't nobody saying a word. What is the problem? Why, why can't we get some cooperation? Where's our community leaders? Where's our activists? Where's our public officials? Where's our police department? Where is those folks at? In President Gardens. Come on now. We, we need to start knocking doors. We need to start making sure that this is uh, brought to the light. We cannot continue to let this happen. As I said before, I know this video may not get a lot of views or likes, but all of my supporters and subscribers, please watch this video, like this video, and share it. Share it across all social media platforms. We have to make this case known. Please like and share so it can hit the YouTube algorithm so more people can be exposed to this. This has to stop, and I need your help. Please like and share with everyone that you know. Please leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Thank you. Together we can make a difference.